or have you ever felt like perhaps that this is just my story it's just like yeah. the heartbreak of a heartbreak Did or it? has it made you feel like you don't want to try again i'm like you know what fuck this i'm done like i can't do this yeah. but in the same breath i'm like but i still believe <laughs> Guy, you will ignore all the red flags. I've been yeah. in a relationship because, like I told you, like it was an arrangement, yeah. and I was like, "There's nothing." It's because I didn't want to be alone, and I was, oh, yeah. I was struggling. <laughs> so I was like, "I just, I'm happy to have this human connection." But then I'm just like, "Oh, I'm getting the eek." Like, exactly. exactly. The eek. And, and that's oh. it. Yes, that eek. Forget the eek to him. You feel. You. You feel eek about yourself. About like your, this is what we. This are. is where we mm-hmm. are. Hi guys, Marugi Muni here. It's Lydia KM. And we're back again with another episode of The Messy In Between. It's It's definitely definitely TMI. Uh, Whoa! Oh my God, guys! Guys, I can't even say anything else because we have a guest today. We have a guest today who's looking so beautiful. Thank as you. You're looking absolutely gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah. As I look at you, I'm realizing, do you ever wear red lipstick or are you always in nudes, mm. glosses? Actually, there's a, there's a phase in my life when, do you remember the Ruby Woo phase? Yes. Everybody Ma- had a Ma- Ruby Woo. Everyone. Exactly. Mm. So all I did was red. Mm. And then when I got into my browns mm. and my pinks it's mm. just like i struggle to go oh, back yeah. to red i know that's and the I, phase i'm and having also now. age i feel like this is an age thing you guys yeah. maybe there's yeah. people who are just like red and yeah. then they stick to i like it. how we just started talking about lipstick you don't even introduce anything <laughs> anyway guys welcome to another episode of tmi podcast so happy that you could join us if this is your first time watching welcome and we are certain you will enjoy our content and if you do please subscribe um and tap the notification bell so you can get a notification every time we upload an episode which is every wednesday at 12 p.m also be sure to follow us on our social media handles tmi podcast ke Murugi Muni, Lydia KM, and our guest for today, who is, I will allow her to introduce herself. Um, well, my name is Jules. I am <laughs> one over four of over 25. I also mm-hmm. have my personal YouTube channel, which is a little bit of a hiatus. Mm-hmm. It's called um, My Tiny, my tiny Little Club. Channel. <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry. <laughs> and then um, I have a podcast, which is what I've been focusing on this past few mm-hmm. weeks. It's yeah just launched it's mm-hmm. called so this is love mm-hmm. so you can check it out there or you can follow me on my instagram jules underscore heart that's j-u-l-e-s not z yeah. not z mm. yeah. do other people put z jules, okay, yeah. Yeah. jules. people, that makes people sense. text me like j-u-l-z yeah. j-u-l E-Z, mm-hmm. J-U-L-I-Z. It is okay. not your yeah. Between <laughs> her and Lydia Kim and mm. Team Podcast. Team Podcast. Team Podcast. Lydia Kim Please. Team Podcast. Yeah, just be, oh, we have Team TMI. Imagine, yes. <laughs> Can you imagine? Yeah. Anyway, guys, do follow Jules. She has amazing content. And we've been wanting to collaborate with more podcasts. So you yeah. can even have us on your podcast. Oh and we God, can I come know. and we can chat. Would you that's be really willing amazing. to come and share your story? Yes. If you haven't listened to This Is Love, it's like, it's basically anonymous stories of people's love stories. Yeah. And let me tell you, I learned so much from episode one. So episode one was, okay, you go, just go and listen. Just go yeah. watch But it. I was like, go watch, yeah. So this is love. Yeah. So mm. this is what you guys are trying to yeah. tell us is love. Mm. Yeah. And I love when I find a know. podcast, which is like, it sounds like it's a simple idea, but it's like, wow. No one in Kenya has told us that. This is awesome. So it is intriguing. Really, yeah. Exactly. I love it. I love the fact mm. that it's anonymous because it, yeah. Just, yeah. it helps that like sharing for just feel like comfortable mm. to share. I love that. Yeah. And it was actually mm. inspired by my my failed relationships mm. and then you see and also just the idea of what we do as girls is most mm. of the times when we're going through something we sit and talk we're like oh my gosh mm. this happened this happened this mm. happened but it's when you learn from your when your friend says no actually imagine don't do that or don't do this oh, but where yeah. do you get these lessons from there's mm. no there's no clear handbook that can mm. work for everybody exactly mm. yeah so that is kind of the handbook yeah. and that is why we decided to have her on for this particular episode because we wanted to discuss lessons that we have learned from heartbreak mm-hmm. you know and just be able to like explain some of the things that we've been going through of course Lydia has been speaking a lot about this on her platform Mm -hmm. but we wanted to have a conversation on here as well which is more um I guess a positive spin on heartbreak because sometimes you can just feel like what else did you learn from heartbreak apart from you know it's painful everything is dead love is dead disappoint you exactly (laughs) love is dead dead. but we're like you know there are the lessons that we have learned and um some positive that has come from previous relationships that we have gone through Mm -hmm. so we wanted to have a conversation around Mm -hmm. that so thank you for coming well thanks for having Really and I don't even remember I told you, you mm. are one of those people who creating is so at your center. Like, mm. you know, you're always thinking about, yeah, creating. You have your YouTube channel. You have, I mean, 
Yeah, thank you, you love thank creating. You, thank yeah, you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Creating. love that. About so yeah. I'm taking a leaf from your book. I think you guys are also very big creatives, mm-hmm. but commercially you're so successful. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So in fact, just before we started, I was talking to Murugi. I'm like, Murugi, please, how do I, how do I do yeah. this? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I'm happy that you guys are so open to sharing. Also, Lydia, mm-hmm. you've helped me. Um, <laughs> do some business things on the side mm. so i do appreciate that it's very hard to meet people that. in the creative space mm. um who are willing to help you with the ideas that are making them successful mm. and they're doing it from a good place yeah, yeah. yeah. joe I've, did that for me so if like any anything she was like no this and do that i used to tell yeah. her like okay when i do my content you know you just go and tell me what you think or whatever yeah. all my ideas so many of them came from her so i never want to be a gatekeeper yeah. because i didn't find yeah. one mm. i did not find one in my environment so why would i be one for someone else exactly yeah it's so ex- and it's so exciting to see creators making money exactly yeah. it's so exciting and living why off not? of this and when yeah. you think about how much money brands have to spend on content creators they can never spend on just one person the brands even who sponsor yep. beyonce mm. they still they still need and other people mm-hmm. so it's like i mean there's enough for all of us there that's is, what i think there yeah is abundance yeah. mentality yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. heartbreak mm-hmm. or breakups mm-hmm. do you guys think they mean the same thing is I a breakup a heartbreak so. is a heartbreak you've a never been heartbroken but you've gone through a breakup or yeah. two yeah. or however how many breakups we have what is what is being heartbroken it's just what? someone else doing something that makes you feel really I, bad i know not necessarily <laughs> i would say that um heartbreak is is the rupture in a situation where mm. you are emotionally very invested mm. the rupture is the heartbreak but the breakup is just the parting of two people okay. so you've so said you that you've yeah. never had a heartbreak mm. but you've had br- breakups obviously yeah, exactly there's a difference for there sure there is a difference yeah. yeah for me all my breakups have been um first of all no one has ever broken up with me mm-hmm. me I've always broken up with people yeah. so i've never like been in a space where it's like oh my god i didn't see this coming mm. like the closest i've ever gotten to like it was almost acrimonious was this guy who I was dating but it was like two months mm-hmm. of a relationship it mm-hmm. was just like it was just mostly a sexual relationship mm-hmm. and then he cheated on me and I was just like ah oh, okay a shame this has to What? end mm-hmm. i didn't feel the- pain I did but it's like it wasn't I I didn't love him oh, yet months, you know yeah. I didn't love him mm-hmm. that much and mm-hmm. it was like I mean this sucks that this has happened but like I wasn't I wouldn't say that my heart was broken what's yeah. your attachment style I'm curious do you know it says that it's um help not help anxious. Uh, no, secure. anxious secure it's yeah. that it's secure yeah I think so yeah but, but your default think, is anxious I don't think of yeah my default your is relationship anxious. and now. I don't think mm-hmm. I've always been that way maybe mm-hmm. it's just the fact that I just didn't go through an experience where it's like you know like really really serious actually i think i would say my worst breakup so to speak and the only reason i say it's the worst one is because we had a child together mm. that's the one that i would say that that one it it hurt somewhat but it, it it i mean when i remember it right now and i hope i remember it accurately that was like i was about 25 years old mm. we had been dating for like six years we had a son who at that time was five years old mm. um I went to study abroad I came back and the relationship just felt really really different mm-hmm. like we were in love and everything but like it felt like something had changed something about studying or being abroad really brought like just changes oh, yeah. your perspective yeah. you know it does. It and does. I came back and I was like all the things that we had said we wanted now I don't really feel like I want them anymore mm-hmm. with and him. like with yeah or even at all you oh. know it's just like at all it's just I just I felt like I was, I was a different person and it felt like we were not being able to evolve together to mm. what i felt was the next stage of my life mm. and it's like the way we were relating before it felt like he wanted us to continue relating like that but me i just felt like i was a different person mm. so now at the point at which i ended the relationship it just felt like i really love you and you know we both love this child mm. but it just feels like we are not going in the same direction yeah mm. so i mean i would say it was painful because obviously it's like losing the idea that you had i genuinely thought this was the person i was going to marry mm. and of course you always want your ch- children to grow up in a home where there's mom and there's dad mm. there even though we weren't living together so it's more the loss of that dream that we my son is not oh, going to sure. get to grow up with his mom and his dad in the same house mm. you know so it was more the loss of that dream that felt painful mm. but like the separating from him it was just yeah so now it's ended that's actually a huge part of breakup that mm. part of what the dreams that you had in your mind yeah. but i also think there's a big part of heartbreak that is about your perception mm. right mm. so if your perception is like you know this person was everything and i'm going to kill myself yeah. well mm. that's going to be feel very different yes. than we grew and it didn't work out it's mm. and those are two they, they might be the same pain but mm. the perception is definitely very different do you feel mm. like breakups are easier when you are the one who broke up with the person as opposed to they broke up with you depends like um 
if it's if it's if you've wronged someone mm. right then maybe you carry the guilt of wronging someone that's why they broke up with you yeah so there's that or <clears throat> that some it, it always comes off that if you left someone it was easier but if you wronged someone and you ruined a relationship and it was maybe a mistake that's mm. that guilt is obviously going to be a lot bigger so yeah. i think it depends on the circumstances yeah but yeah being left yeah it's what, worse. It, it, what it do you think it's a lot worse. um you know it's funny when you said that i just remember the situation i was in where mm. i was quite heartbroken after the break up mm. but i'm the one who broke up with them by mm. the way i'm also like you i mm. i i would do the breaking up mm -hmm. but it was one of those situations where it's like you're frustrated out of a relationship mm. so so it was it, i had to keep reminding myself hang on i broke up with him mm. but it he he let me down so much mm. that where i had to be like i can't do this yeah. in fact i remember it, my friend's wedding was coming up mm. so this was 2020 and I was a best mate mm. and we were supposed to go together and I was like I'm not going to go for this wedding mm. with this person mm. and I'm feeling this way mm. like yeah. it, we've been in this shit space for like a month yeah. and he's doing nothing i know when every time i bring it up it's like but see we are good but mm -hmm. see we are you know that mm -hmm. kind of reverse psychology mm -hmm. avoidant behavior kabisa mm -hmm. and i was like imagine i can't do this yeah. mm -hmm. but i was heartbroken mm -hmm. but them they don't think they were they checked out you yeah. know they just kind of re re um, came back into my life like a year or two later like mm -hmm. oh i'm so sorry like it wasn't it wasn't yeah. you it yeah. was me mm -hmm. um but that it, it gutted me because of how um com um how explosive the connection was which is what they say avoidance and anxious preoccupied it's the anxious trap the anxious, the the anxious avoidance, trap. avoidance mm. trap which is very like it's like oh my god so much chemistry this mm. is the one da, 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 da. Yeah. and right from the beginning we were talking long term because mm. i was not this was just what two years ago so yeah. it's like oh my gosh i think i found the one yeah. yeah and then when 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 stuff started to change i'm just like you're joking right mm. <laughs> what about our plans you're joking yeah. especially because i'd already been yeah. at the age where i have learned mm. how to spot these things mm. yeah. but that was another huge learning point for yeah. me that breakup i was like yeah. oh so when you see these things it's not in your head mm. like yeah. yeah yeah and the idea that when you broke up with someone is like you were kind of in a power position where you know you just woke up one day and you just chose to mm. let this go but mm. half the time people have been abused someone has been treating you like shit yeah. for like 10 years yes. you left sawa but what what environment you are leaving a burning house yeah. so and sometimes it's not your choice it's not a your choice when you do yeah. leave someone it's more like okay like you're saying mm. we're not growing the same way and you're not you're re being resistant to it mm. you're hurting me you're disrespect there's a re i'm leaving sometimes because it's like i'm gi being given no choice so mm. as much as it feels like you might have the power because you decided to leave it's like let, let's see what your choices were sweetheart yeah, yeah. it's like die or leaving mm, you know so it doesn't true. always feel as empowering mm. um, my my i have two i think breakups which are like significant one which was like i hate everyone and i hate everything and you're a demon and this is the worst thing ever and i continue to demonize that person forever mm, mm. versus one my recent one which was more like this is painful but almost instantly i guess because of the tools i have or my level of self awareness it was like we are going to feel this pain and we are going to feel like dying but it somehow felt like we it's like either i'm going to be okay or like what purpose can i get out of it it mm. wasn't it wasn't those ones that kind of leave you like you know everything is done but i think it was the only difference between those two were, was my perception yeah. there's a there's a way i was really intentional about changing my um changing my perspective around breakups mm -hmm. so what would you say that breakup taught you um or one of the things it taught you oh gosh um so just like i mentioned the um okay so uh, by the time i was dating this person i can't say i was really aware about like avoidance mm -hmm. and anxious preoccupied secure i wasn't really aware mm -hmm. but what i was aware about of was these things i ignored which basically what it taught me mm -hmm. is um It, 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 the thing that you're seeing at the beginning that's mm. probably going to be a problem mm. is the that's where you're going to break up mm. in the end so what i noticed um with him was that <laughs> He was not a very effective communicator so I'm the one oh, who had to dear. pull out oh. yeah. information mm. from him mm. um you know like are we okay is everything good da, 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 da. and Do then, you mean like in the way most men are not great communicators or you mean like his it was like absolutely he's barely ever expressing himself I actually himself don't to agree me. with the fact that most men are not good communicators mm. I think because I've met men who are great who are horrible communicators mm. maybe when we're in, um 
romantically involved. Yeah. And then when we become friends, fantastic. Oh, mm. they're sharing. They are open. <laughs> they are, I'm, yeah. I'm clear mm. about what, you know, because it's happened to me in the past where I dated somebody, then we're like, oh, okay, this can't work. Yeah. And we got it. We started doing work together. Mm. And I was like, hiya, you mean you can, you know how to send messages mm. and call people and say this and is where I'm at time. and reply mm. on time. Yeah. So, so I think, I think it just depends on who they are with. Mm. and where they are in their journey of like yeah. personal development mm. but no it was one of those things like like um i i ignored i ignored you know when you have a a, a relationship because i did the same kind of person but just in different flesh mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't we all yeah <laughs> yeah i would did and but then they they present so differently they present differently so but it's later that you're like ah this is the same exactly. person it's, it's oh. later it's later yeah. when you realize oh my god the undertone is the same yeah mm -hmm. the 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 what do you call it they yeah they're the same person yeah. you know what i mean so it's like oh my gosh okay this one this one was maybe didn't I've, I've dated the same kind of person, like the, their essence is the same. Yeah. So because when we met, it was so electric, yeah. I was not able to see past the bullshit, but I did see it. But mm -hmm. I was like, I, 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 did, I don't know. So, you, what, you so my lesson is- something else. Yeah, yes. because I'm like, no, no, but this is it, this is it, this is it. But then even within two weeks, I was mm. like, oh, oh, you dear. know, but I ignored it. So I think the biggest lesson for me is that thing which you remember you learned, yeah. don't doubt it no matter who it is you're with. Like yeah. it is, that is the lesson yeah. that you're taking away and from And you know, you. I feel like that, I mean, that small thing which bugs you at the beginning, it's because at the beginning there's all this amazing, all this electricity and that one small thing which is bugging you. Yeah. But over time it becomes that small thing is like getting bigger and bigger and bigger and yeah. bigger and bigger and then now the electricity is like, it's still there, mm -hmm. but like now the bigness of this horrible thing mm -hmm. kind of like crowds it out. Yeah. But at the beginning, is anyone really able to be like, okay, I don't like this one thing, but... Mm -hmm. You know, that's the thing. That, but that's but that's what that's what that's why you also need to be careful about. I mean, guys, I'm still learning. Like, I don't know. Yeah. I'm still out here. But then mm. what I'm saying is, mm. that's when you need to really how, learn how to trust mm. that initial instinct. Yeah, it's like even when we say, "Oh, you missed the red flag." Sometimes I'm like, "Dude, even if I see the red flags in a week mm. or two or mm. a month, mm. they're usually not strong enough for me to leave." Yeah. So I think you have to take a mental note mm. and be like, all right, there's a possibility this is going to be a thing in the yeah. future. Yeah. Mm. Figure out when you can nip it in the bud instead of, and, and be careful how you're just falling for this person. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? I think I would say it's mostly about awareness because mm. guess what? Everyone has red flags, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And everyone always talks about like, like, oh yeah, wow, yeah, he was a poor communicator. I should have known that. But everyone has red flags. I feel it's just like, be aware of that red flag and decide earlier on if that's something which you're willing, willing to, to do it. Because if it Everyone has red flags and no one talks about that when you're in a happy relationship. Mm. Well, we have the red flag. It's like we are working on it. We are you know? working That's on it. That's the thing that we are dealing with. Yes. But really, it's mm. like everyone's going to be imperfect. You just have to decide, is this imperfect mm. one that makes sense to me? Yeah. Um, one or that something makes sense that I can live in with. Fact, or someone I can live something with. Yeah. Can live yeah. with. If it's yeah. not something yeah. you can live with or it's so far from your, mm. your value system, it's going to be an issue. Yeah, let yeah. me ask you guys. Mm -hmm. I feel like there are two schools of thought when it comes to how people deal with breakups as they get older. Mm -hmm. So some people feel like as you get older, the way you guys have been able to say that now you know that you are anxious mm -hmm. and the other person was you avoidant and what you have, you have more and you're more self-aware. Like now you guys are in your thirties, mm -hmm. you've both experienced mm -hmm. heartbreak in your thirties. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like it's easier when you're older or do you feel like now the other people would say that actually it's more difficult as you mm -hmm. get older because with each breakup, it's like time is moving mm. and with each breakup it's like oh that one like relationships in your 30s are not the same as in your 20s no. it's like this is mm. could very possibly be the man that i spend my mm. life with and have children with so mm. when it ends it's like oh my gosh it feels almost more earth shattering mm -hmm. do you guys feel yeah. like it's gotten easier to deal with heartbreak as you've gotten older or or harder to deal with heartbreak or breakups, not oh, the same yeah, heartbreak, yeah. but breakups. I, I did a workshop, a better breakup workshop mm. um, for the last two weeks. And I have seen that it, it kind of doesn't really matter based mm. on age. Mm. It matters a lot in about, um, it's more about the circumstances and the person, yeah. right? Mm. So the person who has been in a relationship for like 10 years plus, mm. they're in their thirties. Yeah. Are we going to have that she's having an easier time versus the one who is like in 25 and this is their first heartbreak? 
it's like it's 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 difficult in different ways. Mm. Yeah. When you're older, you're more likely to have invested more, so you're mm. having more to lose, exactly. right? Exactly. There's a higher chance that children are involved, yeah. so then it's difficult from that perspective, mm. right? Mm. But when you're younger, you have less tools on how to deal with something like that, yeah. and because you've never been in one, you don't know life after one. Yeah. It's like your first breakup, as far as you're concerned, kills you. <laughs> you die. You are not dead. This yeah. is the what brings me death. So mm. you don't have the you don't have the support of experience to tell you that mm. in fact you're going to be fine, yeah. or at the, the very least you're going to learn. Or how can you do it in a different way? So I feel like it's different intensities, mm. and I've seen that self awareness doesn't always come with age. It oh, yeah. absolutely, it doesn't, it doesn't. but for doesn't. you guys, it has. Yeah, for me mm. personally, I would say yes because of my intention to be more self aware. Mm. But I wouldn't say that. The, uh, these people who are 50 who have the More same level self-aware. as I do mm, yeah, yeah it, it's not necessarily automatically with age so mm. some some people are feeling the breakup of mm. 25 at 40 yeah. it's true yeah. Yeah. you Jules um, sorry what was the question how do you feel like the breakup has gotten <laughs> oh. easier as you've gotten older or or harder to accept it's hard to with. answer that question mm. because I believe yes it has gotten easier mm. with age because mm. I mean, it has gotten easier with age, mm. but I, oh, I'm also of the school of thought that, um, you know, you, you, you know, when they say you're going to keep getting the same problem lesson over, yeah. and, lesson over. over and over again. So, I mean, you could be older and it's still, I mean, I might meet somebody tomorrow mm. and it's like, oh my God, you mean I'm still learning this lesson. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's true. So, yeah. so I, I wouldn't say for me, it has gotten easier with age only because I am trying to figure out okay what is this supposed to yeah. show mm. me but there's people out there who are still very unaware they struggle with being introspective mm. and they struggle with trying uh, with figuring out how they contribute mm. to relationships falling apart even yeah. if the other person was like an aggressor Lydia is always <laughs> shouting this yeah. and yeah. be like no but he's the one who whatever but it's what about true you? he's the one maybe somebody, you, somebody has <laughs> yeah. maybe somebody has hurt you but you see how do you contribute by realizing oh my gosh I am actually dating the same person over mm. and over again. That's yeah. how you're contributing to your own pain. Yeah. Because you're not unable to, to recognize it. Yeah, how it's um, happening. But can yeah. you help it if you're attracted? That's the thing. It's hard. It's hard. And person. honestly, mm. if, if I had the answer to that, I'd be rich as fuck. Mm-hmm. Can we oh, cast here? Yeah. Oh, yes. I'd be <laughs> yeah. rich as fuck. Are you new here? Are you <laughs> fucking <laughs> cast here? Yeah. Because, you know, a yes. lot of people, at the end of the day, what everyone is looking for mm. is a sense of community, a sense of connection, sense yeah. of belonging, whatever it is, whether it's in relationships, in work, in your work, yeah. um, in your business, it, it, there's that thing. So, yeah. so you have to let it, I mean, I think for different, I, th- I also believe that people have like different purposes mm. in life. Like, I don't think it was your purpose to go through what maybe I've gone through, what Mm. Lydia has gone through. Mm. You, you, there's another thing that you, there's another thing that you need to deal with Mm. that maybe has the same intensity. You understand? Mm. Like you you have another, (laughs) you have another demon to slay. Mm. But I feel like maybe for me, maybe one of my, one of my purposes Mm. is to understand the meaning of true love Mm. and how life presents that to me is that Mm. I'm constantly exposed to situations where it's the exact opposite Mm. so that I can be like, ah, so Mm fine tune this is how it is because mm. if i was supposed to find this thing or mm. this lesson mm. how else do i learn other than getting the opposite yeah do yeah. you understand mm. if, if let's say everything is good everything is good in life you don't need to do anything then you never learn anything because you mm. have nothing to there are no problems yeah. right. that exist so yeah. you have this problem mm. that is always like all right i need to be able Figure to connect pe- better yeah. with my friends i need mm. to connect better with in my relationships and yeah. it's like a recurring issue yeah i feel it's very much aligned to where you're here in a way, you know what I mean? You know, from the way you speak, someone can think you've been through 57,000. I think I have been through 57,000, but I've definitely been... A shit ton. Like like big, big, big heavy breakups. There's one specific one that really broke me in my 20s. Like it really messed me up. Mm -hmm. It was on and off for like seven years. Mm -hmm. Um, Mm -hmm. And then there's these two small ones, Mm -hmm. which... But that one was like the... It was like, whoa, that thing shook me. I was 23 Mm. and I was like... Early 20s love is hot. Yeah, and you said there's I a guy like before that. Really hot. Hot. Really? My breakup at 21 didn't break me Seriously. like that. Yeah. In fact, my my the my twos has been my last two, mm. which wow. have been the most um intense. intense. Like, I don't really remember break like when I was younger, you, you don't even hear me talking yeah. about it. So mine is opposite. It's, That's why I was saying yeah. the, the age. Yeah, thing. so it's really oh, not yeah. the age yeah. thing. Yeah. Because for me, when I was younger, yeah. I was like 
whoa, like yeah. I can't, I'm, I, yeah. I am, dist- like, I mean, I'd move on with my life, right? Yeah, but, still. but it would affect me. Yeah. It would affect me and I could see how it's affecting me and how I'm relating to the next guy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Maybe but then now the older I've gotten, hey, I'm <laughs> like, by the way, when I see something is going you're off, not you're I'm like, I'm not here to me. suffer. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so um, maybe I say um, an important lesson I've learned about breakups that might, you know, that might, I guess, be consistent with the way you're saying you're repeating something over and over again. And this is Abraham Higgs. Yeah. Abraham Higgs, who says he this, left her over here. Yeah. <laughs> is that like an American president? <laughs> oh my day. From <laughs> She's our president. That's, that's the only president I recognize. Actually, they. <laughs> they. Yeah. So mm-hmm. Abraham Higgs says that um, nothing happens differently than you expect it to, right? Mm. And if you sit quietly in your room, Quietly alone. Don't don't have people around. Mm. If you think about the end, maybe not the reason why a relationship ended, or like, or just like what you start understanding about the relationship, nothing happens differently than you expect it to. So a lot of the times we are just getting in these relationships so that we can confirm. we can confirm mm. the story that we tell ourselves about ourselves, about love, about relationships, about men, about life. Right. So what I realized was well, actually I looked at my last three breakups. Mm. Right. And the, the signal there, there is a signal there that's telling me I am literally confirming the exact same oh, thing wow. about myself, about love, about relationships over and over again. Mm. So that what we're seeing yeah. is like it's, it's like the story you tell yeah. before this last relationship. I read the book Attached. Um, about attachment styles mm. whilst I was in this relationship. Oh, snap. That was like, yeah, We're yeah. already in it. Yeah, yeah, Can you are. actually, because we've mentioned this mm. anxious avoidant, whatever, yeah. and maybe someone is watching and mm. or listening and they don't know what those mean. Yeah. Can you just explain briefly what so, it means to be secure, anxious, avoidant? A, a, mm. a, a, anxious attachment styles is the, a, a basically, oh, attachment, ref, styles. Ref, mm. attachment styles is the way we relate in relationships and mm. these are based on how you were relating with your parents how well your parents were able to ascertain and meet your needs when you were younger emotional mm. needs emotional needs when you were younger yeah. but i guess if someone's not giving you food still it's going to <laughs> matter right so Certainly. because you are a child and you're uh, you're you're reliant on your caregivers to mm. meet your needs so that's how you start understanding oh if i ask for something i don't get it or if i ask for attention i don't get it or if I do ask for something, I'm able to get it. Mm. So secure people is where their parents were able to ascertain, um, to, sorry, to... Meet the... Meet. Not, no, that was the word I just used. To... God, what's the word I just used? You just used ascertain, ascertain in something and... and uh, Not um, a- a- ascertain. It's kind of predict. It's, 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 it's a different word. Mm. So basically your mm. parents were able to guess or gauge what you needed mm. and provide that need. Those okay. are secure touch people. So mm. they learn that um, they, are, they can be provided for. People are going to show up. The world is safe. That's yeah. what secure they can attach connect. people. Mm. So then those are people who show up in a relationship in that way. They are themselves. They are confident. They don't feel insecure about no, mm. people not loving them, whatever. Then avoid Avoidant people is the, um, are people who they learned that their needs weren't going to be met. Mm. Usually it's like their needs were met some of the time, mm. right? Or their needs weren't met at all. So they learned that their needs didn't matter. So the way they show up in relationship is that they're not going to be vulnerable. Oh, they, and they also, they learn how to self-soothe. Right. Mm. So then they think that their needs don't matter. So they're going to be in their body about how they did, they deal with things. Mm. If you ever dated an avoidant, they're not the person who's going to be asking for help. They're not going to really yeah. share. They, they even they they come off as the people who are like chilled, mm-hmm. calm, mysterious. Yeah. Collective, <laughs> mysterious. It's you because babes love those mysterious men. They don't you offer. Love they don't yeah. offer mm. their needs and their wants because they mm. learned that they, those needs couldn't be met. Mm. And then there were anxious people. And actually, I think anxious people are the ones who our needs were met adequately, but some of the time. Mm. So it's inconsistent. So you you don't you learn to not trust. The people who are uh, who are supposed to give you your needs. So then these are the people who, when you don't text back, they're like, "Oh my God, is everything okay?" Two seconds okay. later, and they yeah. personalize mm. everything. They personalize. Or also, they, everything. they had a caregiver who um, had such a. The book is very detailed. The book yeah. is just mentioned attached. 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 Like, it's it's yeah. called the anxious yeah. preoccupied attachment style. Mm-hmm. So if you have anxiety, it doesn't mm-hmm. mean you have an anxious attachment style. Mm-hmm. And I, people I, always confuse. I hear people say, you know, I'm anxious. I'm like, mm-hmm. no, anxious has nothing to do with your attachment mm-hmm. style. But um, like your maybe your caregiver, there's so many variations of it. Maybe your yeah. caregiver was overly critical, mm-hmm. or 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 maybe you didn't you could not predict what your caregiver's yeah, mood was. So because that that inconsistency, mm-hmm. they become so sensitive mm-hmm. to mood changes. 
and they always assume it's them yep. or something yeah, they've done. Yeah, it's always me. And you can have the most confident man or woman in the world, but you in relationships internally, they're just like, oh my yeah. God, is everything okay? Are we yeah. okay? Is yeah. everything good? And this person is like, everything's good, bro. Yeah, mm. but a secure person can heal an anxious person can heal an very anxious easy person. because very they bring easily. the stability yeah. and the consistency of that. So basically, this is what that's what we're talking about. Mm. I'm going to link like the some details about the, the book in the description the box. Books. What, where was I when you trumped me? You were talking about how in this last relationship you were reading, you read Attached. Yes, I read mm-hmm. Attached mm. when I was in the relationship. So yeah. some of the things maybe now I know mm. about how to spot who has a desire and capacity to meet my needs, mm. not just who's a nice person or a peaceful person or a calm or whatever, somebody who can who has the desire and capacity to meet your needs. Mm. That's the core of it. And clearly what I've been doing in my stories is I don't expect people to do that. I don't expect people to give me what I need. I don't expect people to stay. I have an abandonment wound. So I don't expect that from people. And exactly what I've been expecting is mm. exactly what I've been getting just in different forms, mm. right? The breakup before th- this one was horrible. The relationship itself was like really damaging to me. Whereas mm. this one wasn't like that. It was a warm relationship, mm. but the story is still the same. Mm. The yeah. story is still exactly the same. So that's one of the most important things I've learned. I need yeah. to change what I expect because I'm not ever, I'm never going to get anything except for what I expect. Crazy. Do you, do you <sighs> feel like yeah. you, um, at any point in any of your breakups, question is also to me, mm. have you ever felt like maybe love is not for me? Or have you ever felt like, perhaps that this is just my story. It's just like going yeah. to be heartbreak of a heartbreak. Really? Or has it made you feel like you don't want to try again in love? Yeah, um, definitely. Definitely, really? definitely, definitely. Mm. I think, in fact, I was even telling my therapist, mm. I was talking to a therapist once upon a time and I was telling them, I think I have some relationship trauma. We need mm. to fix that. Yeah. Because I, the person I, and I was actually, Lydia, I've shared this with you. Mm. The person I am after what I've been through mm. versus who I was before, mm is not the same person. I'm very skeptical about certain mm. things. Um, and it doesn't only affect relationships, it affects even like my day-to-day, like my work. I'm just like, mm. ah, man, will I, will I really, can I, should I? No. You know, oh, like yeah. the same optimism mm. that I had mm. was broken. By that that seven, eight year on and off relationship I'm telling you about, that thing, it really messed mm. with me. Mm. So, so some, at some, uh, unfortunately, I'm like, you know what, fuck this, I'm done. Like, I can't do this. Yeah. But in the same breath, I'm like, but I still believe <laughs> yeah. I'll be heard of that. You're yeah. Pisces? I am a Pisces. Yes, so, of course. Oh, we're Pisces. all Pisces, <laughs> And so Actually, Shiki? I'm, I'm about to do that. Shiki Even Shiki. Yeah, I'm yeah. about to do that. Like, let us all just, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so, mm. so mm. it's, 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 uh, like, do you know what? Can I just be honest? Yeah. I feel like there's some toxic messaging mm. around being single mm. out there <laughs> um, sure. around being happy and single. I think it's important to, mm. I think your twenties are your, your years of self-discovery mm. and it might be hard to really, really know who you are when you're in a relationship. Mm. However, if you get a good relationship that allows you to still grow and evolve yeah. well and good, I, 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 I think I tend to thrive a lot when I'm in a good relationship, not when I'm in a relationship. Mm-hmm. When I'm in a good, good relationship. And, and I'll give you an example. I got into a relationship where it wasn't the best. Mm-hmm. I remember and I could see, okay, there are some issues here. But me, I knew what I was trying to get out of that relationship. Mm-hmm. I was not looking for long term. Mm-hmm. I'm like, I just needed companionship. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And for some reason, that relationship... I don't know, this is crazy, but like it motivated me and got me out of a, like, a, like a, even a creative funk mm. that I was in, mm. you know, just because there was just a little bit of love injected in my yeah. life. But I was very clear mm, that, that this knew. ain't it. And we ha- that the person I was with, like, you know, it was like, listen, I'm going through some shit. I just mm. need somebody to hold my hand <laughs> right now. And it's very That's hard to, to get somebody who, yeah. can, who can do that with you. But yeah. even I think where they were at the time, it's just like, all right, let's do this. Yeah. So we, it's like we were friends. Would I say with benefits, but they were friends with the benefits of a loving relationship. Yeah. Do you think like your hand would have felt held if you were not, it was not a sexual relationship? It took a while even for it to become sexual, by the oh, way. It was, okay. I, I was just feeling like. In need um, of someone. Yeah, and I was not even in the country. So mm. it's one of those things where I was just like, man, you know, you're feeling like a bit lost. Yeah. You're like a floating balloon when you're abroad sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so I was intentional with that. So I think mm. love can also be a good, can help you. It, 
some people really thrive mm-hmm. but just don't get jump into anything yeah. because yeah. again you'll get into a cycle of getting over the same same pattern exactly. over yeah. and over again yeah. Yeah. yeah um i guess for me no <laughs> I um, even when you were younger what like want it make you feel like oh I don't want love right now or oh. because I've always been able to ascertain the difference between love itself mm. and the relationship I was in yeah. I was in that relationship mm. that was John yeah. that was Bob yeah. right I cannot dis- I can't say that that happened because of love itself yeah. and me personally one of my thoughts about love is that it, there's an abundance of it mm. there's an abundance of it yeah. if i didn't find it forever because that's all that's happened yeah. there are many relationships in my life where i found love it just wasn't my forever love mm. and because i believe that it's me who's writing my story mm. it's i just need to figure out how to write the love story in a way where i can i can be in a relationship where the person has the design capacity to meet my needs and mm. I do that for them as well. Mm. So it's just a rewriting of yeah. the story. Love is too big and too precious of a gift from God for me to feel like I can't have it. Yeah. Mm. Absolutely bloody I, I know. Mm. <laughs> okay, so for me personally, me anytime I was going through a breakup, mm. for sure I I felt like having sex or like being able to like feel connected to someone mm. else made me okay probably it was like something like I want to still feel lovable I want to still yeah. feel wanted I want to feel mm. like you know affirmed in that mm. like you're still sexy yeah it's his loss kind of thing you know <laughs> yeah. so for me I always felt like that helped me get over men yeah. a lot faster mm-hmm. because it's like okay this comes and then it makes you forget mm. obviously the challenge comes when now you start getting attached to these people who you know they don't really fit your standard of what it takes to be in a relationship mm. but now because they're here We're and they're here. helping you and you, I don't want to feel like a user you know like yeah. oh you're just here to help me get over my breakup or whatever I know Lydia doesn't do that Lydia even yeah. the thought of being with someone else when you're healing from this other one mm, to you feels is like so yeah it, it also feels like I already know I'm here because the person who I really wanted to be you know it's like you're a replacement yeah and that that makes me feel like this is a low vibration experience I feel like those are the ones you're about to catch an STI Ooh, yes it's like the low vibration you catch an low STI you can, like, those are the ones because you you know you have no business being with this man yeah. you know you don't but only it's because of the feeling I personally get Yeah. And if something's going to make me feel worse about myself, it's mm. not good. But if it's going to make you feel good about yourself, by the do way, it. Mia, those, ooh, do it. So let me ask you yeah. something, mm. Lydia. Mm. Um, because have you, have, you ever, you, have you ever experienced loneliness? Because let me, it's funny, we're talking mm. about this now. Because, mm. yeah, mm. first of all, loneliness can be experienced in a relationship, in a marriage, when mm. you're single. Mm. Um, but I was listening to a podcast, funny enough, just today as I was coming here. I didn't mm. think it would, it would have had anything to do mm. with this. Mm. Um, and this um, this researcher was talking about how there's a loneliness epidemic yeah mm. right mm. where so many people are lonely mm. in a very hyper connected world mm. um so our psychological needs are not being met mm. but we are connected All um the time. and and it's, yes. and it's and it's manifesting in so many things yeah. like you know addictions mm. um obesity mm. crime mm. because one of the manifestations of chronic loneliness is like anger you mm, know yeah. like and it, they were even doing some research on people who are over 50 uh, and retired and now they don't have that thing that yeah, of that what they're doing every yeah. day they're not connected to their co-workers mm. they're not connected to and these are married people mm-hmm. and they get lonely and they become alcoholics or mm. they become just some weird Which makes some sense. stuff yeah. so 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 i'm curious to know mm. you have you never been in a situation mm. where you're only doing it because you don't you, you're lonely Or, how, or you've never felt loneliness. Okay. Even um, for you, because you've never experienced heartbreak. So, actually, I that, mean, once you, guys, you ask that question, I'm like, that, I've never actually thought about that. Yeah, like, but mm. here's the thing, yeah. Um, funny enough, the other day I did a meditation on loneliness. Because um, when, especially because... I was like, you know, really like all the time kind of talking to this person who I was with before. Also, our home was shared. Um, the other day, I, I, I felt that. I felt like that loneliness. But then I did a meditation and loneliness, it's your, it, loneliness is a perception of alone. Right. It's mm-hmm. just a different is just like the way we're saying someone could have a different perception of um, of heartbreak. And the meditation basically got you to think about where you felt lonely before, mm. because it, everything with us as adults is like you're just provoking something you felt. Mm. Our emotional blueprint is already set. So they were just like, where did you feel lonely before? And what, once you once I kind of um, pro- processed that part when I, f- when I felt alone as an adult, you f- I, I felt 
when I got out of it anyway, I felt like I'm alone. But that loneliness is from a feeling like I'm not connecting with anyone. Mm. My life feels like it's just kind of just me. But because of the deep connections outside that romantic relationship that I have, mm. loneliness it can only feel momentary to me anyway. And I think it's because of all the kind of juice and emotional connection I feel from other from other people. But mm. outside of a breakup, mm. I've had relationship where it's just like, oh, a situation which is just like, this is fun. I can mm. have a thing which I'm just enjoying, fun, yeah. but not necessarily from the place of I'm lonely. Let me be with this person. Yeah, the re only reason I'm saying this is mm. because I know a lot of a lot of your followers mm. as well. I was yeah. going to say a lot of our followers mm. is because Us, we are all here yes, together. Yes, yes, <laughs> a lot of our followers. Is, is, I, I get questions mm. like that in my DM quite mm. a bit. You get lonely. Um, and yeah, people are like, I'm just so lonely. I don't know. Da da da. I, I I'm going through breakup after breakup after breakup, and I I struggle to give advice, but I just wanted to bring that up so people mm. can know yeah. that not everybody can like for example do a meditation and mm. be able to break out of that loneliness mm -hmm. spell yeah um but loneliness is a sign from your mind mm. that you need to connect mm. yeah so i think maybe figure out how to get family yeah. connection yeah. Yeah. Family. Yeah. Yeah. Fact, the, low region, yes. the low hanging fruit is family i don't know say family. family yeah mm. the low hanging fruit mm. is family not really not relationships yeah. because that Friends. is the person who you will Guy, you will ignore all the red flags. I've been yeah. in a relationship because, like I told you, like it was an arrangement. Yeah. And I was like, there's nothing. It's because I didn't want to be alone. And I, no, was, yeah. I was struggling. Mm -hmm. So I was like, I just, I'm happy to have this human connection. But then I'm just like, oh, I'm getting the eek. Exactly. exactly. And, and, and that <laughs> eek, forget the eek to him. You feel, you, you feel eek about yourself. About like your, this is what we This are. is where we are. Mm -hmm. yeah. exactly. But there are some people yeah. who get into relationships. Because they, of that. And because they're lonely and mm -hmm. they cannot get out because maybe they've been lonely for so, so long, long mm. that they are just like I can't go because loneliness it can lead to depression and maybe I give that really, disclaimer yeah. that maybe I don't think I've ever been single yearning for a relationship or a mm. connection with someone long enough to feel this loneliness that's just like kind of a state of who you are yeah. um, and also I make so much effort to make the rest of my life so full so then I'm getting connection mm. so many other places okay. that it might be the one night I'm alone at home Yeah, the, you know it might be but, that yeah, aloneness but in general feeling lonely in my yeah. life mm. no I feel like I have so much connection connection yeah i felt that when mm. i was uh, sorry no, i ahead, felt that ahead. when i was abroad mm. and i felt like, even a little bit here in kenya and i came back because i'm just like god i have to start again mm. but um i remember there's a friend of mine who we were both single at the time and mm. we're just like listen what we need to do is oh, we're something. talking about like how do you how do you deal with it yeah. especially now when you live alone mm. and she was telling me at the time i didn't live alone i was still at my parents house but she was like me all i do is that i make sure um at least every other day mm. in the evening, I have something to do and not just mm. by myself, not just yeah. go to the gym by myself. Yeah. Like I go to the gym with my friend that's or nice, I go for yeah. a movie. Yes. Or class or something like so that, yeah. I think that's a very... To find connection. To find sure. connection. At the end mm. of the day, loneliness is just your body trying to tell you or your mind trying to tell you, you need to connect. Mm. You need to connect. There's a lot of bad decisions people can make because of being because lonely. Of you end up in a... I, I, I've been in situations where I'm, I'm like, what the fuck am I doing at this party? Yeah. Why am I still out here drinking at yeah. this time? It's because I don't want to go home and yeah. be by myself. Yeah, by myself. So yeah. you'd rather be here. And it's just like, yo, yeah. I think honestly, but now since I started being proactive and being like, okay, um, I need to enrich my life mm. with Those, other things. Uh, yeah. With other things. Those yeah. things which you are like, that's boring. I don't want to go because mama said we go to Auntie mm. Nani's thing. Yeah. Go for mm. that. Go for it. Just go, even if you're, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes, yes. So here's my experience with the loneliness. I remember feeling my loneliest when mm. I was in my relationship with my, my son's father. Mm. You were in it. The, yeah, while I was in it, that was like, it was a very lonely time for me because the nature, the toxicity of our relationship mm. was such that it was like us against the world. So when I tell you that throughout university, he was my only friend. And that's why I'm always telling Lydia, I, I feel like I missed the phase where people were making friends mm. and like lifelong friendships because with us, it was he didn't like hanging out with other people. Other people didn't like him. Mm. It was always just like, he was quite a bit of an unlikable person at the time. <laughs> now he's all right. <laughs> he was a bit of an unlikable person. So we never used to hang out with other people. So it was either I'm with my family or I'm with him. So during the time that we were together, I never developed any other friendships outside of us but I remember even in there feeling like even anything to do with him I can't really talk to anyone about right. it because it's just like they're already telling you but we've already told you mm. to leave him mm. so no I'm not going to help you now even deal with your toxic mm. ass relationship you know <laughs> and I remember leaving when I left that relationship I said to myself that 
avoiding loneliness means being able to make deep connections with people besides your partner. Mm. Yeah. You know, so that even now when I met um, Zach, who even now we are still together, I still made, make sure even till today that I have deep connections with my family mm. and like with other friends mm. within reason because I don't have that many friends. Mm. But like so that I can be anything, your friend. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, thank you. I only accept Pisces. <laughs> yeah. So I make sure that even if in in another, I don't know, if in the future we ever break up, mm -hmm. of course, I feel like there's a kind of loneliness that can only be cured by a, by a, a, man. a man or the <laughs> person you're attracted yeah, to. Yeah, let's be honest. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But like, like general <laughs> loneliness, I feel like I wouldn't of experience life, that because yeah. I have people around me. You know, yeah. you know that you can speak to your sister or to your friend or, you know, I can come on the set and yeah. whatever and feel like I'm around people. But where your relationship is like, it's just me and you. Yeah. And everywhere you go, it's always the two of you. Mm -hmm. Every time you go to the gym, it's the two of you. In fact, if your relationship ends, your gym membership has gone. Now, yeah. it's yeah. true. You Actually, know, that, well, that's something which I wrote about that. I'm really proud of myself yeah. in this um, relationship. Yeah. The rest, and I guess usually you will see if the rest of your life mm. was able to flourish while in a relationship, you were in a healthy relationship. Yeah. Usually the relationship that drown you away from other things that connect you. Yeah. <coughs> yeah. You just know. Uh -uh. You so just then know, after yeah. this one, despite obviously it hurting, mm. I had so much going on. Mm. Like my, no friendship of mine. I thought, oh yeah, we haven't talked in so long. No. Mm. Everyone was just like, Liddy, I saw you last Saturday or I saw you two months ago or whatever the case may be. So I had... I I had made a lot of, I had done a lot of work to keep the rest of my life flourishing mm. so that if it did end up breaking up or whatever, and not, that's not the reason why, but because having a full life really matters. Before, the one before this one, yeah. the one before this one. He was I, your life. Um, he wasn't saying my life, but what I realized is that I wasn't being intentional mm. about other things. Mm. So it did feel a bit like my identity was tied yeah. in that relationship. And when you get out, you're just like, okay, what do we like again? What yeah. food... Uh, what do we do without this person mm. being kind of the center of our life? And yeah, it can be really, really painful. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I also feel like um, something that helps people in breakups, and I'm only saying this because a lot of the questions that we get about someone wanting to leave someone or they're mm. just going out of a relationship is having money. Yes. <sighs> Hello, let's, please. Let's, let's be because, true. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because if I'm just healing from the breakup because it's just like, oh, I miss having someone to talk to and to fuck, that's one thing. But my lifeline, the person who was giving me rent money is, is now true. gone. Now I don't have rent. Now I don't have, I'm not eating well. I used to be a Java every day. Now I'm not even no. affording chapo beans. I mean, it's like, that adds a whole other element that I think in a way would distort even how you process the breakup mm -hmm. because then now you're tying. <laughs> <laughs> now you're tying the end of the relationship to lack of financial stability and now you can't even even your people are here on TMI telling you go to therapy you're like I don't even have money, money for, food. for food forget yeah. therapy you know so I always tell and women especially is that you even if you're in a relationship where this man is providing for you please be saving saving even kidogo kidogo because if the relationship ends mm -hmm. it will help that you have money that's it a will fact help that you have money I yeah. went to therapy this is my therapist who I pay 5k mm -hmm. Per session, Imagine. right? Me too, babe. Right? <laughs> and you, I, I, I was going to therapy and I was just like, I'm going to go to therapy every single week until mm. I feel like I'm stable enough. Mm. Right. Let's start if you don't. Let's start if you don't, if you don't have the um, access to means to that. I took a week off work. How many who, who that's, a, yeah. that's something which you 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 might not be able to do. I would mm. I would say that almost everything that is going to benefit I don't know your life, your freedom, your mental wellness requires some element of like financial stability because mm. therapy, self care, going out to dinner. Mm. I have taking a day off mm. in two weeks, um, in two weeks in a month. How, how are you affording that? Mm. So it definitely changed how I was able to deal with my breakup, being able to be in a place where I was able to afford the things or have the tools that could support me. Not everything costs money. Many yeah. things are going to be, um, you have access because of the internet, but a lot of things did matter that I had my yeah. own money. Yeah. And I was, you, are, you are living together. If you couldn't afford that house and all those bills mm. on your own, where'd you go from now? Yep. Somebody moves out and leaves you in the house. You're like, oh my That's God. It. Oh my yeah. God. I always say, I feel like you should, li you sh even if you're living with someone else, you shouldn't live in a house that you can't afford yourself. Mm. That that was my rule. Yeah. If we're moving in, if this all turns to shit, am I able to stand on my own for a while, mm -hmm. at least? Maybe at least have a six months yeah, or three six months. months. At yeah, least six months. At least six months. Able to yeah. afford it. Mm -hmm. Something else you've learned from, what have you said? Oh, Anything I have so many learned? lessons. That I've learned from a heartbreak. Yeah. I don't know. Mm. I guess I guess the one you thing I would that say, one about loneliness. Yeah, that one about loneliness. But mm. another thing that I, I I would say I've learned from heartbreak is just that it feels like it's the worst experience in the world, but it really isn't. 
I, I, I mean, and in that moment, obviously, it feels like it's absolutely catastrophic. But I can tell you other experiences I've had which have been way worse than heartbreak, even or way worse than breakups, even though I have gone through a breakup. Like there what? are things which you can experience in, in a relationship mm. that's worse than how you're going mm. to feel when the relationship Ooh. actually you ends. Know, actually, what the Dr. Vundi says, she was like, yeah. no one talks about it. You think that now you're married, that breakup ends there. Or heartbreak ends heartbreak there. Ends there. Yeah. There is heartbreak a lot in relationships. In or relationships, in marriage. exactly. That's so yeah, interesting. And I guess it depends on what value you, you place on things. Because like if you're in the relationship, if you're suffering, your man is beating you. Mm. But you're like, anyway, at least we are still together. If the value is to be in a relationship, mm. that's going to prevail. Exactly, yeah. Mm -hmm. And obviously then now the, the breakup will just feel like, oh my God, I have failed. Because now also you are touching, the relationship has ended, I have mm. failed. But really, there are way worse things. There are way worse things. And I know a lot that's of people, so when you're going through something horrible, yeah. you don't want to hear that. That, you know, that's not the worst thing you can be going yeah. through. Yeah. But rest assured that... Oh my God. <laughs> if you thought you were in pain, you you were in life pain, has got you. Pain. Life has got your back. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. What else have you learned? Oh, I've learned so much. Can I just take Even out my notes? Like hundred um, ones. But one of my biggest lessons is that this is how I wrote it down. I mm -hmm. said, um, "It's not supposed to hurt this much, mm -hmm. especially this soon." Mm -hmm. So. Mm -hmm. Um, mm. If you're in a relationship and then very, very early on, mm. there's just bombs blowing up everywhere. That's, uh, you just exit, mm. I think. Mm. Yeah. Um, and it took me being in a healthy relationship to, to be like, that. to know that. Because when I would go and seek counsel from my girls, let's say like Miss Tiramisu, I'm mm. like, okay, you guys are like the OGs here. She could always tell me, babe, it's not supposed to hurt. It's not supposed to feel like this this soon. This, mm. And I'm actually talking about the uh, Mr. 2020. Mm. She was like, it's not supposed to feel like this this soon. Mm. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like, you know, at the point you're like, I get it, but this is what I'm dealing but with. But here we are. Here we are. Mm. And and the, the, what I have here is not enough for me to mm -hmm. break up. Mm -hmm. So if if things are not working out, like even in the first like two months and you're just already mm. Mm -mm. Mm. I would say just start planning your exit mm -hmm. emotionally. Planning your exit. What is what is enough for you to break up? It oh for me individually because mm. you see everybody is different. Yeah. Because the reason I'm asking that is that I feel like when it comes to breakups, women and I think this is different from I don't know if it's different for men, but I feel like with women we always feel like by the time you're leaving a man or you're breaking up with him, you want to 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 have gathered enough, I don't know, yeah. enough suffering, enough evidence, yeah. enough whatever. It's never enough for just like, um, something in me just tells me that I don't want to be here anymore. Yeah. So it feels like you have to have gathered enough. So if anyone asks you, why did it end? Or if mm. he asks you, or if he says, but why are you doing this? You can defend it and not, you know, seem like you're, you're overreacting or you're being stupid or whatever. Do you feel like that plays a part in your breakups? Yeah, I mean, for mm. me nowadays, I mean, it's, oh, this is this has taken a lot of clarity because mm. of experience. Yeah. Because before I'd be like, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna stay if somebody cheats, but somebody yeah. cheated and I stayed. Mm -hmm. mm. I'm not gonna stay if da da da. Then they do it and then I stay. Mm. Um. So the, those things I used to think as a young woman that I would leave. I'm like, I, those ones I just put them. I put I put a pause because mm. everything is very situational. Mm. Now, what I know I cannot stomach in a relationship mm. is if my emotional needs are not being met. I'm anxious, preoccupied as an attacher. Mm. Mm. So if you make me feel insecure inside the relationship, mm. like I have to pull information out of you, mm. you're not being forthcoming communicatively. Mm. And then I have to, you know, you're just thinking, okay, yeah. what happened? What changed? Did mm. anything go? I, I, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Mm. Yeah. So somebody who is not an effective communicator, mm. um, somebody who I feel like I need to, pull affection out of mm. Ooh, yeah. that for me is for mm. real it's a deal breaker yeah. because I have been in situations where I have I have ignored mm. and I then I suffer mm. yeah. and like I said this was the thing that made us break up in the end yeah. another huge one for me is unfortunately because of some you know things I've been exposed to um like alcohol abuse I think there's a lot of alcoholism in Kenya. Yeah, <laughs> where, 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 you don't need to you think. think you it's think factual, it's social, yes. social drinking, yeah. but people, people, Ooh, I think people good, are yeah. going through it. Mm, yeah, so I I've don't think I can. Before. I don't yeah. think yeah. I have the. Yeah. yeah, I don't think I have the capacity to deal with somebody who has a, a, a drinking issue or, mm. or, 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 or 
our, our, our unhealthy relationship with alcohol, mm. like yeah. binge alcohol drinking or drugs. drugs yeah. Exactly. Kind of Lydia and I spoke about this mm. and we were like, okay, I have um, the capacity. At what, at what point is it like, okay, it's been a month and you've been drinking every night and we've spoken about it. Mm. Are you leaving at that time? Because mm. I said yeah, that no. I'm giving it, I, did I say a year or yeah, a year and a half? Because you have children and because you're married. Because I'm married with yeah, kids. So then my, for mine is that, but even if you're dating, assuming you've dated somebody if five years. If we're dating, years, for me, six months, of consistent like this is now affecting our life this mm. is like you know our money of course it has to affect your money mm. our money your job our livelihood so this months. is now the mm. center mm. six months without any willingness to change mm. i have a lot of capacity to deal with a lot of shit mm. but i am choosing not to do this i'm, yeah. I'm, I'm choosing not to do that mm -hmm. um i would say for me one of the things which i always tell someone is like if you're being neglected, that's enough. That's it. Emotional That's needs. enough. Yeah. That's if someone is neglecting you. Um, and I don't know how you don't feel neglected from someone cheating, but you feel neglected from somebody not being forthcoming. Now, mm. now I don't think I could accom accommodate that. You know, when I was younger, oh, my, it's maybe, yeah. Huh? Yeah, my first boyfriend cheated on me. Oh. So mm. I just didn't know what to oh, do. Okay, you? right. Dude. Mm. 1920 so we dated between 19 20 21 mm -hmm. right um one of the things that you get arrested for as a parent is neglect it's not you're not beating your child you know it's not like even abuse per se but neglect so when you're in a relationship as she's saying emotional needs not be like someone consciously neglecting you yeah. whether it's like they're not talking to you. i hear people in relationships and you haven't talked for someone in two weeks mm -hmm. and we start again mm -hmm. oh, you I've call after that. two weeks ah Hmm? You've been there? Yeah. But marriages, I hate, happens no. a lot. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, because you live together, you you're live ignoring together. each other. You know, when right? you're living separately. But that was like at the, more at the beginning of our marriage. And now, also, I'm just like, we're not going not, to bed until we're finished talking about this And it's not thing. you yeah. deciding that I don't oh, exist. Yeah. Mm. It's like we are angry at each other. You you haven't made an effort to talk to me. I haven't made I've an effort. Made Here made we are. Yes. Mm. But neglect is, I am seeking you out. Mm. And you, you just don't exist. Whether it's like paying attention to me. Like all of those is consistent neglect for me. It's, I feel like that's more than enough. Mm. And also it, cheating and dating, mm. as we said, you can't feel primary school. You yeah, can't feel I mean, nursery no, school. Yeah, cheating and dating, no. you can't feel uh, nursery yeah. school. But I, yeah, because I, I, usually mm. it's like, okay, so if I'm, if I'm taking it here as I'm in dating, right? Where I guess, you know, we should all be like, ooh, ooh la la, mm. blah, blah, boom. What, what's going to happen? Yeah. Like, I can only project that this only gets worse. Mm -mm. Yeah. Mm -mm -mm -mm. For me, my, my breaking point in like, I need to end this mm. relationship is not so much what the other person does because there's, I feel it's like how you feel. It's not even how mm. I feel is my ability to, to keep being myself and executing whatever other duties or tasks I have to do in my life. Mm. So if I feel like it's reached a point where I'm not able to, let's say work or show up at work like uh, you know fully and be myself mm. or be able to i don't know take care of my kids or mm. be able to that's the point at which now i feel like it has affected me whatever it is that he has done has affected me to the point of not being able to live my life mm. that's, that's that's not a really what's a high threshold though because i feel like the way we operate it's yeah. like we could do it i could I do know. this for a long I time <laughs> I could be, I could <laughs> do this, but yeah. dying inside but wait, for no, a long I time. Like, I feel like where I've reached right now, I feel like I've seen so many things in relationships yeah. to the point where I really don't think this one of saying, I know me absolutely, that one I can't, that mm. one I can't, mm. I just, this one, let's the same way I've said that, like cheating. Black and white. Would, it's yeah. so white, situational. It's like like today, like you can, it, yeah, yeah, you can, today you can see it even right now, mm. but then by the time you, whatever has gotten you there, That's so the much yeah. has happened. Mm. Exactly. It's not just cheating, yeah. break up. Like, exactly. Hey. And even watching, like, see, situations are not, they are great. So different. Yeah. Like now you say, for example, let's say you've been dating this guy for five years, mm. and then you say, he starts, he, he goes through a really difficult time, his parents both die in a car crash or of cancer, and then now he becomes an alcoholic you said you are giving him six months now it's been five months mm -hmm. on month six he mm -hmm. goes to rehab mm -hmm. he stays there three months mm -hmm. and then comes out after uh, another five months he relapses mm -hmm. and now he goes a year mm -hmm. and now before you know it it has been five years mm -hmm. of him being in the alcoholic cycle yeah. you know mm -hmm. and so sometimes it's like it really everything is situational it as is. you say but, I agree. but the, the reason why i put mm. those standards is mm. not because i'm not human myself i could who said i can't be um an alcoholic who said i can't be you can't i can't be you uh, can't how do you know i just know okay anyway um <laughs> I, I am also imperfect is my point so mm. i need grace too on mm. so many things mm. so there's grace but without that kind of bar it's like where are we going you don't know that we are we are approaching something mm. if you don't have anything in your mind that tells you okay you know like if 
if it gets to there, maybe we might need to have a conversation. Mm. Those are more of my guides around knowing. Because let's say you're in an abusive relation, emotional, sometimes you don't see it. Mm. You don't see what's going wrong. But if we know this is month six where we are not able to pay rent because somebody is it now it's like a, a small signal in your mind that something is happening that's not okay mm. furthermore it's not to say about what the person does it's how it makes you feel as you said mm. maybe cheating for someone else is like mm-hmm right but somebody else is like you are unable to get past that because of how strong fidelity is a core value to mm, you mm. so it might not be to this other person but it's a value to this other person or children for me being in a marriage where there's alcohol and or any kind of abuse i know what that feels like mm. i know what that feels like so that touches something that might not touch someone else because of their own um, whatever they've been through, maybe their thing is like a, a man who doesn't come home. It's like, I've mm. never seen a man home. You know, it depends on whatever it is, mm. it's stronger to you. So I think it should be based on your value system as a person more than, you know, you're saying that you are a perfect person. It's more like this, somebody who's abusing things mm. for my kids. No, I want to run. Somebody who's abusing your kids. No, somebody who's um, like who's in substance abuse or something like mm. that where we have children. Yeah. Ooh, that's an extremely <laughs> difficult one for me to go around. An extremely difficult one, even with all my empathy, mm. that's mm. difficult. Yeah. Yeah. Even, I mean, it's even your for me, in your I mind. Like, yeah, yeah. Even for me, I feel that way, especially having grown up in a home where my, my father was abusing alcohol. Mm. But I'm, I'm, I don't know. You want to give grace, but I you want know to give there's grace some and things want, which are difficult. Yes, exactly. Yeah. And I want, and I've always felt like, and uh, like there are conversations which you have with your partner, of course, so that they can know that if you cross this line, that it's, it's, an, be, issue. it's an issue. But there's also, I remember when we were doing our premarital counseling and they were saying that the, the words you should never use in marriage is always or never, mm -hmm. you know? So always mm -hmm. saying like, you, you just you're always, always doing this, yeah. whatever. Or me, I can never, you can Morugi. never say I never. You always, <laughs> you're always late. Yeah. <laughs> Oh man. Ah yeah. So I I'm in my head I'm always just like we want to give grace in all situations and when now that time comes then now we will see you know what happens yeah. or how we deal with that situation. Yeah, yeah, now let me because life has yeah. humbled me. Yeah, yeah, yeah what you see, I think, the thing. And that's the thing. Me, for mm. me, Lydia, I wish I was like I wish I was like you never experienced heartbreak, but yeah. I have. And I wish I was like you where I had such resolute um standards. Mm. I do, but it's one of those things. I don't know if it's life humbling you or just like um, like for example, I never used to really understand mental health issues. Like, mm. and this is the, before mental health became mental health. I'm just mm. talking like ten years ago. I mm. see these people in the club who are just drinking and smoking and doing drugs, and, and I'm just like, hey, uh -uh, these ones, I'm yeah. not getting like that's not for me. Mm. And then life can really, you can go through some traumatic experiences, mm -hmm. and then you start to become the rebel where you're like, ah, I'm going to walk into a and yeah. that was never me. And I was like, oh, life can actually life change you. Can change you. Trauma, change you. trauma you. can change you. Yeah. So I, I'm more empathetic or I'm more, I don't know, my knee is reduced. I don't know, but I, there needs to be a balance because I went to the, I went from an extreme of never, never, ever, mm. ever, ever to, True. okay, we just have to go with the flow. Everything then I was going too, too much mm. on the flow. Yeah. Now I'm in the space where I'm finding mm. the middle ground of myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but yeah. I, I feel like once I get to that point where I feel like you just feel like it isn't right. Like, I feel like that's actually enough. You know, someone will, will message me and just say something like, oh, you know, they're perfect or whatever, but I just feel like something is wrong. Okay, dig yeah. a bit deeper. What's something? <laughs> oh, it's just something. Oh, let's dig a bit deeper. They are constantly shouting at me. Oh, we get there. Okay, you know, yeah. it's like um, yeah. when you, you're starting to feel like it isn't okay, I feel like it's enough for it to not be, like for it to be a problem. Like, like how many people will leave at that point? You know? Yeah. I know. Mm, I, I'm not even problem. saying that yeah. you leave at that point, but mm. you can know that if it's feeling like it's not right, already you're headed to something different. One mm. of the things which I'm stopping to say, as you are told by your therapist, yes. is stop saying people are amazing or someone is a, what is that? Define what that is. Say somebody is consistent at communication. Ah. Somebody gives me nice hugs. But when you label someone, it's difficult for them to be something different. So mm. you have always said your husband is amazing. So when he my does, husband is amazing. Fantastic. When he does <laughs> something which is heinous, it's difficult for you because so of the identity you've attached to them mm. to see anything different. So they don't need to be bad either. Mm. Don't let them not be amazing or a demon. Let, let, let's live here in the facts of the matter. They are consistent, they are they are consistent. Um, their present dad what does that even mean because if he throws them on, up on Sunday and down that what does that really mean their present dad stuff. every day on Sunday 
Woo! Good. Oh, That's present it. on Sunday. Is present dad. Yeah, you know, like, man. what does that mean? Like, yeah. be a bit more <laughs> down to the facts when you're defining people so that you can actually know who they are as opposed to who you are making them Lydia, to is be. it that easier said than done? Because no, I but I'm like, saying it. My yes. therapist is just like, nobody's oh. allowed to be amazing, no. good or bad. Remove it. Mm. Especially like, you know, the whirlwind of love is not a, a realistic kind of like... I'm speaking this to, uh, in this <laughs> state, right? But if it's something which I'm trying to work on so that I stop recreating the same shit, over so, over, these are some yeah. of the practical things I can implement so that I'm able to be like, okay, that person, that person was... I felt warm when I, even you can say I felt warm when I was around them or mm. they picked up the tab or they're successful. But now it's like amazing. Babe, but I, I babe. feel like in your last relationship, mm. I feel like you were like that. Like what? you were constantly saying the specific things about him mm -hmm. that, that made him, in fact, I don't remember you describing him as amazing, but I remember you constantly I saying, I feel, I feel safe around him. Mm -hmm. I feel secure. I feel, you know, it feels stable. Mm -hmm. I feel, you know, like free mm -hmm. and things like that. I feel like you actually really this good at that. This is one thing which I know for sure that I, that I mm -hmm. said more consistently, mm -hmm. but, um, but it's actually what I was looking for, a peaceful person. Yeah, mm -hmm. and exactly. And they were a peaceful mm -hmm. person. Very, very peaceful. Mm -hmm. but I remember the list I, I created as far as how I want this person to make me feel mm. was very much from what I didn't get in the last relationship, mm. right? Mm. However, that I got, I got everything I said. However, there were other things mm. that I needed as well. I didn't really talk about what my needs are. I am still figuring out what my needs are in a relationship and then being able to spot who has the desire and capacity to meet them, right? Mm. So the way I'll approach it now, it's not like you're a peaceful person. No, mm. it's, I feel peace when I'm with you. That's, mm. that's a fact. So, so the day I don't, it's nothing to do with you. It's like, oh, I don't feel peaceful when I'm wrong. I'm able to shift as time goes. Because in the beginning, that person is like, oh, warm and loving and he's amazing. But as they go, they don't change. It's your definition of what that was wrong in the first place. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. So, I mean, this is um, lessons that we've learned from previous mm. relationships mm. Or, re or relationships that or have broken up, down yeah. or mm. breakups. Mm. Um, something that I said I really have to mention today is um, if you're playing games, something isn't right. And by games, mm. what I mean is... Mm. You so I, and when I mean something isn't right, I don't mean with them. Mm. Also, maybe something is has not is not right you. with you. Mm. Let me explain. Maybe somebody does something, um, and instead of communicating effectively, like mm. or maybe they want to leave, but you want to hang out with mm. them, mm. and then you 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 do something passive aggressive, like mm. oh okay anyway, um I was planning to go hang out with Murugi mm. anyway. Because what you're really trying to do is say I want to hang out with you because you want a protest reaction, behavior. protest behavior, mm -hmm. um or if you're playing this. You know, those I, I, I won't text back because they've texted. I'm giving it an hour and da, 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 da. If so that isn't right. Is that something isn't right in the relationship or something isn't right with could you? Be, it could be either in oh, the relationship, in the, the connection, dynamic. Mm. the dynamic is not working mm. because this is my personal experience mm. in those relationships where I'm constantly gauging and saying, Is it, is it the right time mm. to call? How are we doing? Da, 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 da. It's not supposed to feel like that. There's no safety. Mm. There's no safety. So if you're just feeling emotionally safe in the to the you know, like you can call without thinking you're. Am I too much? Am I too I much? Two hours ago. Or, or, yeah. or you feel mm. like you have to adjust the core of who you are. Mm. There is something not not right. So that's what I mean by playing games. Mm. Um, and another thing I wanted to say is, which is also connected to that, is, you know how we read a lot of books on love and relationships. Mm. So I mm. do anyway. Mm. Um, it's like I always say, listen, read the literature, but also read the room. In the book, he says, um, men, I mean, as a woman, you should wait 90 days before you become intimate with somebody. Yeah. And he talks about it in depth. I mean, I I, I, I took that in Kabsa, Hook, Line and Sinker. But then mm. when the movie came out, even the main actress, it was May, Meg, what's her name? Megan, Megan Good. Mm -hmm. She didn't wait 90 days. Do you know you look like Megan Good? Uh, don't even But like a dark me. version. Doesn't she? Really? Kind Megan of. Good. I promise. I'll put her side by side. And then, <laughs> I don't yeah, think you so. do. You do actually. She's gorgeous, by the way. So are you. Yeah, mm -hmm. so I mean, some of these things, like you read them, but then also figure out how it applies. To, to you and mm. if you if you fuck up and you have sex like at day 67 doesn't mean it's done 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 yeah. you know so some of this some of these things mm. some of these books or even like he's just not that into you mm. yeah a book like that very helpful and you, at least it, you're able to identify oh this is how I shouldn't if, yeah if you're if you're not getting what you want mm. he's just not that into you but mm. also some of these things are very 
circumstantial. Right. They're written in the context of New York, which mm. is what he's because this was the, the one of the writers from Sex in the City, mm. or the yeah. male. Mm. So yeah, some of these things I'm just like, yeah. And finally, it's one of my biggest lessons is not to be so hard on myself mm. for the mistakes I made in the past. Yeah. Yeah. Because I always say I write I write to myself in the journal, I'm like, don't be so hard on yourself mm. because you were just looking for love. Yeah. Getting into this situation, you were just looking for a connection. Mm -hmm. Not like, oh my God, what's wrong with me? Why didn't I, how comes I'm not learning the lesson? They're like, no, just mm -hmm. be gracious with yourself and yeah. 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 But it's if it's true. been 20 years of you learning the same lesson over and over again in 20 relationships, does someone need to now maybe be hard on themselves a little bit? Yeah, no. I mean, that's mm. now that's what introspection is. Mm, you have yeah. to, you have to. I, in fact, if I don't think you can tell yourself be easy on yourself if you're not mm. able to be like, I right, it's been 20 years. It's been a but minute. But yeah. I remember this lady, I think she's um, in England and she was like, um, she's marrying, I don't know what she was marrying because she's mm. sick of men. I was like, all the times you've been with someone, we are still saying that that it's not you. It's men. It's not you. It's men. <laughs> no, you know, no, I feel no. like it, it, it's um that's okay. not the place which brings that victim energy, which feels really nice. Mm. Like, you know, oh, woe is me. But really the truth is, is it woe is you? Or it's like, how are we co-creating this mm. experience? Because you're a co-creator. Nobody robbed or broke into your life. It's like, you know, you're a co-creator of your experience. So you've definitely gonna be able to you you gotta sit down yeah. um and um and assess yourself. Mm. Actually, this is something I was definitely supposed to plug a lot earlier um i am having a healers brunch um which is going to be an event i am doing as a kind of um as a celebration of the two-week workshop i'll be doing as far as a back um for a better breakup so we are discuss we are discussing how to change the narrative because it can't always be the other person yeah. it's like we're here for a reason there's things that we need to understand about ourselves mm -hmm. about love about our relationships to enable us to have healthier, happier relationships afterwards. And you're, yeah. you're going through a breakup. Sorry you missed the A Better Breakup Workshop. It's been one of the most amazing things I've ever done. And it was so enriching. And it, we kind of created a sisterhood. You, didn't, you don't have to be part of that, but you can be part of the event which is coming up because we want to have breakups where we write a better story, not mm -hmm. regurgitate mm -hmm. the same old story. Exactly. So if yeah. you want details about that, we have put linked them in the description mm -hmm. on how you can buy a ticket, on location, on time. Also, you can check out Lydia's um, Instagram Lydia KM for more details. If you're going through a breakup, by the way, and you're feeling lonely or you're just feeling like you're just so lost, don't go through it alone. By the way, there's something about being in a community of people who it's like we have they all, get it. Yeah, we, we oh you get it. Yeah, they they're, just and get they're it. feeling yeah. it right now. Not exactly. Not I want. From, yeah, right now. So yeah. definitely go and 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 participate in that. Mm. I feel like. I love that there's new conversations around breakups mm. happening and relationships and things like that mm. happening. But I still feel like we have such a long way to go mm. to put, like people being able to have a different narrative around how I love, who I choose to love, the agency that people have in relationships and especially women. Mm -hmm. Like me, my heart goes out to women because I, I just I just don't feel like men sit with these kinds of thoughts. I feel like when a man is in a relationship and he just says like, now this thing is just not working for me. He might not break up with you, yeah. but he's already checked Mentally out. Mentally checked mm -hmm. out. Mentally he's checked out and then it goes, but women were the ones who are always negotiating mm -hmm. and trying to whatever. And like, you, you know, you, everything is on you. You're the one who's trying to like make it better and whatever. Even when it comes time for breaking up, you're trying to make it easier for him. He ain't thinking mm -hmm. about how to make it easier for you. Yeah. You know, kind the of The price thing. is higher for women, the shame oh, and all the, of it. It's the, your job. Is, it's <sighs> you for you to keep the relationship together. So it's, mm -hmm. Um, you can't keep a man. I don't think men are ever told you can't keep a woman. Yeah, I've never just, heard you're that. Gonna get another so one. the yeah. cost, because mm. of the cost of an ended relationship, is usually so much higher for women. Yeah. Then of course we are more invested in kind of trying to figure mm. it out. Mm. And maybe I don't know what it is, but there's just something in me that just feels like that feels like a like the the shame that might come right from ending a relationship mm. feels really tiny than me continuously choosing to be in a relationship where I feel like it's not right. That feels like that's embarrassing to mm. me. But, it, but that one, you see, it's only, it's only you who knows, <laughs> yeah. I guess. No, As but, but that's the thing. That mm. me, the, the truth I know yeah. feels far worse, far worse than the truth of the other people. It's mm. just like, that you are assuming something, whereas yeah. this I know. This you know we for sure. Know <laughs> for sure, this shit stinks. Yeah. Like but the other one, like people yeah. are assuming based on their own stuff, based on their own mm. ideologies. But this one, when I go to bed, 
and I know my truth, mm. it, that will rock your self-esteem. That yeah. will rock it. Absolutely. Yeah, I'm not willing to, to I know, sacrifice yeah. that. Mm -mm. Anyway, guys, we really hope that you have learned something. Me, I've learned a lot, by the way, mm. from listening to you, Jules. Mm. Oh, yeah? Then there's, a, there's a softness, a tenderness with which you speak. You know, me and Lydia, we always talk like we're fighting. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't. But yours, you know, I'm talking. How do you know I'm here? Hugging. Yeah, yours is just so, it's just so really? calm. Really? Because I feel like I talk like you guys. No, no. no. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely not. So plug yeah. yourself again. Where can people find your content um, and how can they connect with you? Okay, if you want to connect with me, you can find me on my Instagram. Mm. My handle is Jules underscore her, as in J U L E S mm. <laughs> underscore H E R, not ha. Not ha. Mm. Uh, yes, <laughs> Jules underscore her. Um, I also have a new, brand new podcast that I launched mm. about a month ago. It's mm. called So This Is Love. Mm -hmm. It's available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, um, Google Podcasts, or wherever you mm. find your podcasts. Mm -hmm. um, or you can also find me on my YouTube channel. My individual YouTube channel is called mm. My Tiny Little Channel. Yeah. And you know how you're saying about... Um, like sometimes we like, oh, you can't be bothered to try again or, you know, whatever it is with the lab. I feel like who you are, like someone great deserves yeah. to experience you. I guess Even if it's not for you. Even if it's not for you. Even if it's not for you. Forget mm. yourself. You, you don't want yeah. to say that. Yeah. You want to try again with the lab. Yeah. I feel like you be someone who's capable of loving you right mm. deserves to experience what it feels like to be loved by Jules. Yeah. Oh, thank if, you. If not for you, let it be for the world. Let it be for <laughs> the world, for the world <laughs> Jules. On. Exactly. Yeah. Hey, I need to call you guys every morning when I'm like, uh, okay, okay like, you're gorgeous. You yes. look like Megan Jules. <laughs> yes. Yes. Love you so much. Yeah, thank, thank you, so you so much, guys, for mm -hmm. tuning into this episode. This one has been, I love the conversation. Sometimes when it's me and Joe, it's very, do, 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 exactly. it's a bit more back and forth. But then you guys have very, very good chemistry. Like your, your oh, banter is like, you. it's like a tennis match. It's like, chuk, chuk. <laughs> let's meet at the booth after this. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tennis match. It's yeah. not a, it's not a, I don't know. It's not football. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> So it's like she says and then that. she says and then yeah. she says and I'm like and I'm loving it. I had to remember to oh yeah, I also yeah, have something to say. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So but then thank you guys I'm, for having me here. Thank you so much. Oh, I so love it here in TMI. Yay. I love this space. Yeah. I this love conversation you. that was a bit more I don't know open and a bit more loose and we were able to kind of go into different points. Yeah. Feels like uh, feels like a really good conversation. I so thank it. you so much mm -hmm. for that. We hope that you loved it as well, guys. Let me tell you, heartbreak comes and it goes. We promise you. It's up to you. Maybe how fast it goes because it's. It's going to come it's and gonna. it's always mm. going to go. It's up mm. to you exactly how you handle it. And we hope you can handle it in a way that writes your story in a better, prettier way Absolutely. as opposed to keeps you stuck in a negative one. Mm. So thank you so much, guys. Please follow us on all the social medias we have mentioned mm -hmm. and we'll see you in the next episode. Bye. Bye.